Okay, great. Uh, I'd like to now introduce Stephanie Studs. Uh, Stephanie is uh, now moving to a new office, the Office of Innovation and Implementation. And, but we feel confident we're still going to be working very closely with Stephanie, and we're thrilled about that. Um, Steph, I'll turn it over for your presentation about field reengineering. Great. I am Stephanie Studs. I am the team lead for Rocket, and this is just one of the key projects that will be part of the new Office of Innovation and Implementation. So what I'd like to do is spend a few moments with you um, preparing you for what we, what we did during our November simulation experiment. So as we've talked about in the last few PMRs, we've talked a lot about um, the rocket journey. And I'd just like to level set our journey for just a moment. The, um, when the team was formed in April of this year, John's simple request was to the team, I need 20% increase, in, increase in NERFU productivity. Thank you. So during um, John's goal introduction to the team, we walked away thinking, okay, how do we get to that 20% increase in NERFU productivity? Everyone assumed it was the implementation of Mojo or our operational control system that would get us to that 20%, reducing our miles and our hours spent. As we've talked about before in 2010, we drove every road in the United States nine times or more. So everyone began with that assumption that it would just be optimization and routing of enumerators and passing that information off to our Compass handheld device. What the team quickly realized is how can we have an automated handheld device that we're using to enumerate respondents and an automated optimization and routing tool, yet we still have paper payroll, we still have a training uh, avenue that's all verbatim, manuals, things of that nature, and then the staffing that was in place that really managed from a paper perspective. The team took it on to automate the training, and you're going to see that as you've seen before, some of our introductory modules. We automated payroll so that we don't have to meet at McDonald's or Panera anymore every morning to turn in those D308s. And that left us to a huge transformation in the way we manage the field operations. So when we left off on the journey, we talked a lot about the simulation experiment that the team was about to venture into. As you'll remember, I talked about that simulation experiment truly being our dry run. The team came up with a lot of really uh, radical concepts, system design, and we needed to make sure that we had tested that before we put it into the field. So what I'd like to do is back the week of November 17th to the 21st, and I see many familiar faces who spent some of that week with us, which we really truly appreciated and enjoy. I'd like to take you back right before you entered our operational control center or our area of support operations. You saw a video that introduced you to the simulation experiment and what the team had done to get there. So now what I'd like to do is just take a moment to share that video with all of you. Welcome to the Rocket Live Test, the Simex or Simulation Experiment. Before you see the Simex in action, we'll explain Rocket and its impact on the decennial census, particularly the non-response follow-up or NERFU operation. I'm from the U.S. Census Bureau. One of our overarching challenges is conducting the most complex decennial census ever using new methods, technology, and approaches to data collection. With all the structural changes we're making from the people perspective to the device perspective and all of the automation, we needed a dry run, an opportunity to test all of these things in as real life as we could get without setting up a brick and mortar test environment. Our goals generated a brand new ConOps for NERFU, including an enhanced operational control system, near real time operations information, and automated training. The new ConOps structure eliminates roles that supported a paper-based operation, which we won't need in our new automated environment. And so we eliminate the need for meeting at McDonald's every morning. Instead of having to wait a week or 10 days to get data back in from the binders, it actually is giving us data at nightly intervals. So we can do a much faster analysis of the data and the quality of the data coming back in during this test. 
The structure you'll see is the AOSC. The AOSC will be at headquarters and the Denver Regional Office will run on the ground operations in Maricopa County, Arizona. The new organizational structure separates the management of staff from the management of workload. Local supervisors of operations will ensure enumerators have what they need to complete their assignments. Field managers of operations and area managers of operations will ensure work is progressing in the operational window. The rocket implementation phase has a creation task, a live test, and a refine task. The creation task includes an enhanced operational control system called Mojo, automated training materials, and operational control center or OCC design. The Simex will allow us to conduct a simulated dry run using real-world scenarios, real-world systems, and synthetic data. We're looking to learn if we've set our staffing ratios appropriately, if the operational control system design is right, if the automated training properly prepares staff, and if the operational control center design works appropriately. Feedback from the live test will allow us to refine the CONOPS and move on to the production phase of our rocket journey. This team has made massive, aggressive changes to the way we're doing business. We needed a fundamental way to test that prior to going into the field. Simex gives us that core capability and allows us to refine once we're finished at the end of November before we go into the field on May 18th of 2015. These are the key milestones associated with the rocket project. This live Simex is only halfway through our journey. The decennial census is the largest civilian administrative peacetime effort in the U.S. Due to their success in developing simulation capability for DOD and DHS, both huge operational environments, we asked MITRE to create a CIMAX for our project. In this CIMAX, there are 40 LSOs participating throughout all the regions, as they will for the 2020 census. In 2015, LSOs will participate from just one region, Maricopa County. These are the actual positions, the AMO and the FMO, sitting in front of you, actually doing their daily work as you would see them in 2015 in the Denver Regional Office. During the CIMAX, Rocket will also test the ratio of enumerators to LSOs. Before, they can only manage eight to 10 enumerators. Now we're moving into an infrastructure where they believe they can manage somewhere between 15 and 30 enumerators. Hello? Hi, Susan. This is Jay, your supervisor. And we will come away with metrics and analysis that will give us a quantified approach. Here's a sampling of scenarios from the CIMEX. Some are initiated by enumerators and some by managers, LSOs or FMOs. These scenarios created by the rocket field team are supported by synthetic data to illustrate real life situations in the CIMEX. All refinements will be completed in time for the last phase, 2015 production. And here's a quick look at some video from our enumerator training courseware that's in development right now. Not all of these addresses are actually houses where people live. Take a look at these photos, for example. Some are stores, like this coffee shop. Is there a number for the management office I could call or my supervisor could call? Understand that the local guard may not be trained in your situation. The supervisor should be. Hello, my name is Susan Smith. I'm from oh, the Lo siento, no hablo inglés. Maria! Por favor. You'll have a smartphone to use out in the field, and it has an app called Compass. Mm -hmm. That will help you determine what counts as a housing unit. Okay. If you still have questions, you should call your supervisor. Um, how long will it take again? About 10 minutes. Okay, let's do it. Okay, now let's test your understanding of the materials we have just covered. The most exciting part for the entire Rocket team has been just this opportunity to really think outside the box, bring in new innovative technology, embracing field division and others within the Bureau, as well as outside academia and the industry community, and actually seeing this come to life in this simulation experiment that everyone's about to see. Now please, step inside to see our live test, and thanks for being part of the Simex. Okay, so bringing it back, let's talk for a moment about what it took 
um, for the rocket team as well as our partners at MITRE to actually get us to the simulation experiment. It was a heavy lift on both sides and in order for us to get there, we actually had to do um, some preparation ahead of time. So as many of you have heard in previous PMRs, um, field division helped us tremendously by putting together what we call our rocket field team. That's about 22 people with varying degrees of knowledge about previous censuses, current surveys, and at various levels in the organization. They have been provided to us from all six levels or all six regional offices. So about every eight weeks, we all come together. We're sharing new capabilities within Mojo, within Compass, the handheld device, the automated training. So what we did during one of our most recent trips was we asked the field team, we divided them up and we said, can you come up with scenarios that would accurately reflect what would happen in the field? We, the rocket team here, did not do that. We wanted field to actually tell us about the day-to-day -day activities that go on. Cars break down, dog bites, all of those kinds of things. So they not only came up with the scenarios, they actually came up with um, how often those things happen and helped us come up with the data that was behind it. That came hand in hand with what we've talked about before, synthetic data. When the rocket team formed, one of the quickest things we realized heading for this simulation experiment, what we were about to undertake with Mojo, we realized we did not have a three-dimensional constructive simulation model here at Census. And we were fortunate enough to work with Rocket and the mass stats here at Census to come up with that simulation. That simulation provides us the household data the enumerator data, and our time data for optimization, which was something we never really needed before. So why is that so important? Why are those two key components so important for us going to, sim to SimX? As you saw in the rocket simulation, and what you're gonna see here in just a moment, is we actually prepared Maricopa County, which is where the 2015 test will be. We actually put the road networks and the data together to emulate those household scenarios, as well as the data it took for Compass and Mojo to interact for those 80 some odd scenarios. In addition, the recruiting was huge, and this was probably one of our biggest wins of all, and I'll talk about this in a few minutes. Field Division was gracious enough um, with their chaotic schedules to put on loan to the rocket team about 89 people for a two-week span. Why was that so important to the team? It was important to us because field is the ultimate user and the group that we're impacting the most. We're changing their staffing ratios. We're giving them new technology and devices. Them being able to, hand the, to hold those was huge for us. So they participated from around the country in their homes, in the regional offices, and some here in the MITRE white cell as well as, as, well as headquarters, which was critical for us. This is closer to what the 2020 look and feel will be. Finally, our infrastructure build out. So infrastructure, everyone assumes is just, you know, the TV monitors that you'll see, that area operations support center that we put in place. But there was also a lot behind the scenes there, which we worked very closely with IT. This was a radical change in how we're doing business. And IT came together with Rocket from the very beginning, and they worked hand in hand with us to develop all the solutions that you're about to see. Not only the TV screens, the monitors that we are now setting up in Maricopa County, County, uh, for the actual production test, but even down to how we communicated via the telephone devices from the enumerators to the LSOs, which is our first line of command in the management structure, and from the LSOs to the FMOs, and you're going to see that in just a minute. So in all of this preparation, what was the team trying to get to? What we really wanted to see was the Mojo Operational Control Center, center design, did we get it right? Were we engaged enough with field to deliver what they really needed? Did we set staffing ratios appropriately? Let's do some testing and see what it's actually gonna look like in 2015. Was the training content appropriate that we used? Keep in mind, what we did prior to engaging in the simulation experiment is we trained everyone right here in the rooms that you're sitting in today. We did it via virtual teleconference to the regions. So anyone who participated did not fly here to headquarters to take the training. We actually did it via virtual teleconference to the regions and that's how they got their training. Did that work? Did the content itself work? Because what we don't want to do, as we've talked about before, is spend five days in a classroom and paper training. We want that true automation, that to, true ability to use technology. Finally, did the solution deliver 
our operational control center, the TV screens, our dashboards, our heat maps, all of those key pieces. So what I'm gonna share with you now is actually what occurred during our simulation experiment here at headquarters, out in the field with all six regions participating, and last but not least, with the, the MITRE white cell. Welcome to the Census Bureau's rocket simulation experiment. This is what operations will actually look like on the ground as we manage the two rocket panels from Maricopa County, Arizona. It is extremely different than the way we've done censuses in the past. Before, we would meet at McDonald's in the morning and we would pass out binders and maps. Then we would give out work assignments to the enumerators. We would also meet with them every morning and we would collect their D-308 payroll forms. Now what we're doing is we're actually giving their assignment to them via the Compass device. They'll receive their text message in the morning, they'll open their device. They're already routed the way they should go for the day of all their case assignments. We've got our simulated set of enumerators. So whenever they have a problem, they're escalating that to the LSO level. And sometimes the LSOs are escalating that to our FMOs here in the office if there's something that they can't handle or they need approval for. That one is actually a work and alert. So I, I will send out a, you know, a great job on working your alerts in a timely manner. So we're looking good here. Okay. We've kind of input a lot of real life situations that will come up in the field into the simulation. So these scenarios that are coming up, um, we think are probably pretty common things that are gonna come up in the field. And all this data updates on, on the fly. It, it all, we're not looking at you know, a day old data. We're not looking at three hour old data. This is happening. This is probably 10 seconds old. One thing that it's really good for is to, is to track changes in enumerators and their work schedules and availabilities. This is good data to use to kind of monitor your team's performance and progress. This Mojo system is amazing. Coming from the 2010 census as an area manager, I can see how far we've come from paper to automation. I can really see this being a cost-saving effort. These are my LSOs up here. We have alerts that are generated, alerts that are resolved, and alerts that are live. It's amazing. Simex is flawless. I've had previous experience from three decennials, 1990, 2000, and 2010. We had more paper, but with Simex and what we call our Mojo system, we are able to connect actions to thoughts. We can send it out to those local supervisors and they can impart that data on the numerators and we can resolve things quickly, very flawlessly. Layla is ahead and she has additional resources that we can move over and that can happen instantaneously. And that was never the case before. It would take days and possibly weeks. That's, that's a great question. My dad has outstanding. So that's kind of from a overall ALS. There's a huge paradigm shift. We're no longer expecting people to dig through reports and figure out where the issues are. The system ought to be smart enough to tell them, you've got somebody with a lot of short interviews, there's something wrong. You cannot possibly enumerate somebody for, in, in two minutes and get quality data out of them. We never had an idea of when enumerators were actually out there working or not. So the fact that we've got this real-time data coming in about whether someone has synced their compass device, has picked up the assignments, and are actually out there working is a huge step for us. This gives us a better feel for whether work is actually getting done in the field and where we need to assign resources in the future if work is not getting done. What if you don't need two people here? What right. if that was just one? My only advice, don't set your targets too low. At UPS, um, 10 years ago, we did a re-engineering effort and reduced 85 million miles driven a year. No one would have believed we could have done that. And I think there's more to gain than you think. You're going to find more benefit and you're going to make bigger changes to this organization than you expect. I love it. Love it. For anyone in the future in the role of FMO, I would definitely say let Mojo work for you. Let Mojo guide you on how to do your work to be the best and most efficient way to get your job done. Well, if she submitted that she speaks Spanish and she doesn't speak Spanish, then we might have to take some action upon that. Oh, definitely. With seeing how well the system is working so far, I'm excited to get out there and see what successes we have and see what we can fix as well. Up here we've got a pocket where we're not hitting very much. These dashboards pertain to FMO Zone 2, which is Allen. I did send out a message asking uh, informant. It brings us mass efficiency. It brings us into the 21st century. It gives us that gateway to the future. Let's walk before we run. 
but we're actually starting to deploy that technology early on. Okay, so the benefits of SimX. Why was it so important for us to do this? I really think the team felt as though with all the radical and revolutionary changes we were making, we were doing it from a staffing perspective, system and technology. We invoked training, automating payroll. That was a lot to take on from April of this year. And you know, the cool thing about this was senior level management here let us think outside the box, but would it work? So what we found was at the end of the simulation when we walked away was we were able to test this in a dry run scenario. We were able to test our systems before we went to the field in 2015. And we have data behind all of this now using the MITRE simulation technology to support our decisions as we move ahead, which I'll share with you in just a moment. If you were here during the simulation experiment, what you would have seen was us doing a morning run that encased the East Coast. In the afternoon, we embraced both the East Coast and the West Coast. In um, two sessions every day, we did what we called hot washes. And what we gained from that was a very quick knowledge and understanding from all of the individuals that were participating and in the field, how things were going. Were they working well? Were they not working well? We had our IT team on standby in the operational control center. They were able to make quick changes if we could in the lab environment prior to us opening up the afternoon session or potentially the morning session. So field was quickly getting able to use that technology and the updates they were asking for. It also illustrated that agile process. That's what we were doing in this throughout the entire evolution of the project. Every eight weeks, we would continue to go to the field and we would say, is Mojo getting to where you need it to be? They were constantly giving us that feedback. What we felt we delivered in the simulation experiment got us through all of the high and the medium things that they wanted and most of their must-haves on the low list for us going into the 2015 production test. We were able to deploy the training and get feedback from the training of what they think was really, really good, but also what did we need to elaborate on now that they actually were driving the technology? And if any of you have kids, this is a really easy scenario to relate to. If you have kids and they play video games, Mario Kart, and they wanna drive, they're 16, they wanna drive, they can do all of those things, but until they physically get behind the wheel of a car, they don't really understand what it is, nor do you as a parent, the things that a car is capable of doing. That's what this allowed us to do. We turned the keys over to field division and field was able to alert us and tell us what went well and what didn't. We were able to put tablets in the field. We learned very, very quickly things with the tablets. This is the first time they've really deployed tablets for the use of data management for the local supervisors of uh, operation. And again, just including all levels of the management structure from all of the um, regional offices. So what did we learn? As I said earlier, the big piece we were looking for is staffing ratios. In the earlier PMR we talked about in 2010, we were only able to manage eight to 10 enumerators because of the paper process and the weight behind that. Moving into our CIMEX scenario, field felt they could manage somewhere between 15 and 30. With the simulation experiment, we actually went above 30 into the range of 35 and in some cases 40 enumerators to an LSO. What we found and feel comfortable with going into production is we're looking at 23 enumerators to one LSO. So remember, our local supervisor of operation is the individual that is managing the people on the ground, the enumerators. Remember in our previous discussion, that huge distinction between LSOs, our first tier managers, and our second tier, our field manager of operations. We want the LSOs to manage the people and the field managers of operation and the area manager of operation, which you saw in the simulation, that were sitting there in the room together actually managing the day to day. In doing that, we figured out they can, without much of a productivity lapse, we can do 23. That is a conservative level. When we started getting into the 30s, we started to notice a little bit of a de decrease in productivity. So we felt comfortable that 23 is where we should be for the 2015 test. As good as Simex could get us to reality, we know with automation, being in Maricopa, there's a lot of other things that could happen that we need to be prepared for. 
on the ground in reality is always different than any experiment or demo you can do. We also looked at the LSO to FMO, so that first tier manager to that second tier manager. We believe they can manage 10 LSOs to one FMO. So we feel comfortable deploying that environment in the 2015 test. We also looked at the operational control system at Mojo itself. In all of the hot washes and the final feedback that we got from everyone after the simulation experiment was over, and as you heard in some of the video feedback, they felt Mojo was very intuitive to them. Most, we really looked at the smartphone device um, background that some people had. Some people had no experience whatsoever. Some of them were on their devices like we are every day. What we learned was within a day, they felt very comfortable with the application itself and being on the tablet. Within a day and a half to two days, it was almost like back of hand for them. So that was a big incentive for us because we were concerned about how long it would take them to feel comfortable. Mojo user interface improvements, why was that important? We walked out with a lot of things that we needed to tweak. Um, and, but here was the coolest part of all. One of those things was, as you saw, our alerting capability. As you remember, the key for Mojo was manage the alerts, always manage red. And as you saw in the Mojo system, we're actually automating your to-do list. I wish someone would do mine for me every morning. But basically, we're telling them what all their alerts are when they come on for their shift, and we're putting them in the priority order. One of the things we realized in the simulation experiment was that they were actively working the alerts, but we could easily provide more information in that alert to them. Yesterday, for the first time, we released in the afternoon um, what the new alerting system was going to look like. The team actually got to look at it and we actually got to provide feedback, and we'll be sharing that with Field and everyone very soon. The other key piece that we thought was just a nice to have, when we developed Mojo, we threw in what we called a messaging component, and it's just like a simple messaging, I can IM back and forth, but the system was keeping the history behind the messaging. What we figured out very quickly in the simulation experiment was, we forgot to train them on one of the key pieces that was necessary for the SIMAX, a keyword they needed to put in so we could get quick analysis from MITRE every day. And we were sitting in the operational controls center. We were like, oh, how are we going to do this? Somebody yelled out and said, hey, just send them an IM. What we quickly realized, and it was like an aha moment of, did we just really do that that fast? It's like, yeah, we're in the 21st century, we should have. So here's what it eliminated. In the past, I would have picked up the phone and I would have called a manager who would have called eight people and they would have called 10 people. And by the end of that, we don't even know what the message was. Within minutes in our IT environment, we were able to send out that message in a standardized fashion to everyone. They could implement it almost instantaneously. That was a huge win for us. But the other piece we realized was how important that was for them to do the job. Now we all have email, so why was that so important? Everything was self-contained within the instrument itself. It had the history. They could pull it up by enumerator, by case, however they needed that information. They felt that was huge. So to us, it was something we threw in as a nice to have. It was something that turned out to be a key evolutionary piece as we move ahead. So I'm happy to say here today that we've made almost all of the changes to the messaging that came out of um, the SIMAX experiment. And we saw that as well yesterday. And we'll be sharing that very soon with everyone. Um, the other piece that was important was the training. Um, as I've said before, Jenny Kim's team has done an absolutely phenomenal job with ADCOM here at Census, the videos, and all of the automated training that they've developed, as well as our contracting support group. And what was important was this is the first dynamic change we're making in this. And what we wanted to make sure was the content was being delivered appropriately. So we were able to do that, deliver that content here in the CIMEX and get feedback for that as well. We have actively embraced all of those changes. We took the first eight modules to Chicago the second week of December and have gotten feedback from field and are implementing that. And the last modules will go to LA in, uh, in February, the week of the 10th through the 12th. Our OCC design, so when you saw our simulation experiment, you saw our field manager of operations and our area manager of operations, just as you would see, managing Arizona from Denver for the 2015 test. What we figured out during that was that the design was right. 
and we've worked with IT. They're actually implementing that design this week and next week in Maricopa or in Denver in the regional office for the 2015 production. So we felt as though not only did the concept we came up with work, we were also able to implement it with very minimal changes and we had TCO support on site the whole time, which was phenomenal for us. If we wanted to make tweaks or changes as we were learning, we were able to do that. And that was my final key, is being with IT from the day one. You know, we kind of knew where we were going as a rocket team. The changes were radical and different. IT was able to listen to what we needed and actually bring those things to life as you saw them. And now they will do that for us in the production world. What we're refining. So as we're coming out, as you'll remember in our journey, our refinement stage is our last piece prior to hitting production. So we've solidified our concept of operations. We've gone back and updated that to actually show what we will be doing as far as the staffing, the training, and implementing the technology on the ground. We've made the most of the updates at this point to the Mojo interface coming out of the simulation experiment, and we will be sharing those very soon with people here inside of census, with field, et cetera. We've made some refinements with TCO on the tablets, things that we learned throughout the process, updating our automated training materials, as I mentioned a few minutes, minutes ago, and actually working with field for the institutionalization of these new staffing ratios and how we're gonna move forward. Our key milestones. So we finished our simulation experiment in November on the 21st, and the team quickly turned its direction from coming out of the simulation, taking what we learned, what we got out of it, and how do we get it to done for 2015. And I feel as though we're getting there quickly. We will be going to LA and sharing the technology and everything in February, and then we will be beginning our training of the actual LSOs, our FMOs, and our enumerators. We will release Mojo in the late March timeframe for all the testing and final implementation for production. And then us just going on May 14th for that production environment, okay? So we've accomplished a lot with our simulation and we've, I believe, implemented almost 90% of the list we came out with in November. And I believe we're in a great place moving into that 2015 test. So within this year, in that one year from the time of creation of the team on April 1st to the time we deliver, I feel like the team has been able to pretty much envelop everything that came from field, uh, what we got from our stakeholders, as well as what we learned in our simulation experiment from MITRE so that we can deploy those in 15 as our true pilot and proof of concept. Any questions? Sure, Trish. Uh, Trisha Durr with EIG. Uh, yeah, um, it was very exciting to be there. And um, I'm just, my question is, how will this be uh, replicated either for Rocket or for other systems, this SIMX um, methodology? So that's a good question. So we're working very closely with the IT team, um, especially with SEDCAP, to begin to say how we can begin to show integration using the simulation experiment. We have a SIMEX on board for 2016, but you guys saw a lot of the cool bells and whistles and we'll enable more technology and you would see that in 16, but what we're really going after is also being able to show implementation and integration with things like Maestro and other systems or the operational control system, UTS, other things in the 2016 simulation. There's a lot of discussion and planning going on now since the close of our simulation of how we can integrate those things going into later in 15 and also in 16. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are hungry, you just wanna go to lunch. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, well, thanks for your attention this morning. We'll take a one-hour lunch break. We're right on schedule. Uh, we'd like to see you back here at 1 o'clock, and we'll proceed with our presentation about the 2014 census test results. Thank you.